the common criteria, uh, or more properly, the common criteria for information security evaluation. Now, um, just to be clear, uh, although this is uh, this is definitely a standard, this is ISO one five four zero eight. Um, and, uh, it, but it is not a security standard as, as such, or even a model. Um, and it's not even really an evaluation standard. Um, it is important. It has given us, for example, the, um, the distinction between uh, functional and assurance requirements, security functional and assurance requirements. Uh, and that is an important concept and, uh, you know, it's, it's formalized here in, in the common criteria. Um, the, uh, the common criteria is one of the, uh, only international standards that you can, in fact, uh, uh, get for free, um, uh, one of the, the relatively few, and, and one of the uh, useful ones, actually. Um, the, the website, I think, is still commoncriteriaportal.org, or it may just be uh, commoncriteria.org. Um, they, uh, they did an awful lot of changing of, of where it was available in the early days, um, but I, I think you know, one of those those two uh, is still active and and uh, you can download the the three parts of the common criteria uh, from them uh, and it is in three parts now um, uh, I'll go I'll go into uh, more detail on on the two uh, well parts two and three but um, Part one is, um, originally it was about 70 pages, now it's over 100 pages. Um, it is, uh, it is useful. Um, it is something you, you probably should get as, as source security literature, download and study, um, or at least read. And in particular, um, at one point they have the chart, uh, the original of the chart, um, indicating the relationships between uh, the various aspects of risk, threat, vulnerabilities, uh, assets, so on and so forth. Um, uh, many, many others have, have derived from that. Uh, Les Bell has uh, probably the, the one I consider the best. But uh, again, you know, that's a... Uh, you know, really good um, introduction to all of those concepts that we talked about in uh, security management, and the uh, it, it's the relationships between the the various concepts that really define them. So, um, you know, something to uh, to definitely search out and and look at and study. Um, in regard to uh, those very central, foundational, important terms, um, and as I say, you know that's that's where you're going to get uh, the original of, of uh, those diagrams. Um, uh, now, okay, I, I you know have given you on the one hand uh, that it's it's not even a security standard, not even an evaluation criteria, and uh, on the other side that, you know, there's all these important things that come out of it. So, you know, what in fact is it? Well, um, interestingly, uh, the example that I tend to use, um, if any of you have worked with ISO 9000, um, you, you will get this example immediately. Uh, for those of you who don't, ISO 9000 um, is the international standard for 
quality, except it's not an international standard for quality. It is a standard for documenting what you do, uh, what, what your company does in regard to quality and uh, you know, how you manufacture a product, how you provide a service, what, whatever it is. You, you document it according to the ISO 9000 standard. And every time I uh, do seminars, uh, if somebody has worked with ISO 9000, I always uh, put it to them. Uh, it is perfectly possible to write an ISO 9000 document uh, passing the ISO 9000 criteria and perfectly acceptable as a quality document, which essentially says we have no quality in our products. We, are, we, we make crappy products and we don't care. And everyone in any of the seminars who has ever worked with ISO 9000 has agreed that that is a correct statement. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the common criteria kind of falls into the same category. Um, you have... Um, We'll, we'll talk about uh, production profile. That's basically your, your functional security requirements. And the evaluation assurance level. That's, that's basically the, uh, the assurance requirements. Um, and it is perfectly possible to write those in such a way that you really aren't saying very much about... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the actual security of uh, your products, your systems, and um, well, I uh, again, I Windows, uh, you know, poor old Windows, um, uh, but um, Microsoft did. Uh, uh, well, as I mentioned before, that they they submitted. Um, uh, windows for the um, uh, uh, TCSEC uh, C2 level, and and they did pass, and and that doesn't you know say very much, uh, but they did uh, submit windows for the common criteria, and if you look at the protection profile, the protection profile um, is. Uh, written in such a way that it, it basically says we make a not terribly secure workstation. And then uh, that's all very well and good until you realize that um, when they submitted it, they submitted it under EAL4, Evaluation Assurance Level, uh, sorry, uh, EAL3. And EAL3 is the highest evaluation assurance level that you can submit under when no actual testing is being done. It's, it's purely based on the documentation provided by the vendor. And so basically what the Windows submission and, and it was passed, but what it says um, is we make a not terribly secure workstation and you can be confident of that as long as we didn't lie to you. And that is all that it says. You have to know when you are dealing with the common criteria what the protection profile actually says and what the evaluation assurance level actually is and uh, what uh, assurance it does in fact provide.